Hi, welcome to the PB&J Kitchen. I'm Amy and today we're going to be making a vegetable fried rice. As you can see, we have a ton of vegetables on our table here to make our fried rice. Our goal with making this recipe was to fill half of our plate with vegetables. There's a little bit more vegetables in this recipe than you'd normally see, but it's really great and a lot of the kids have loved it that have come through our kitchen. We always want to get started with washing and drying our produce. I've already done that for you today, so now we can just get started. Here at PB&J, we like to use something called the claw when we're cutting our fruits and vegetables to make sure that our fingers are staying safe. So when you do that, you wanna make sure that you're holding all the way up to the top of the knife. You don't wanna hold it way back there. You have more control when you hold it all the way at the top. And then we also want to make sure that we are holding our hands with our fingers tucked all the way back. It looks like a claw, which is why we call it that. Um, and then your thumb needs to stay back too. You don't wanna make sure your thumb doesn't start creeping up to the front. When you pull your fingers all the way back, it keeps them safe. There are a lot of vegetables that we're cutting, so this isn't the best recipe for your youngest helpers, but there are a few different steps that they can help with, and I'll point those out as we move through the recipe. So we will start with our carrots. Um, this is a step that someone can help you with in the kitchen that's a little bit younger. We wanna make sure when we're peeling that we're holding the top of the carrot and we're always peeling away from ourselves, and we're just gonna peel all the way down and take all of the outer skin off. And then once you have that done, we'll clean off our cutting board. We wanna make sure that our cutting board is always clean so we are staying safe and our fingers aren't slipping on any of the extra vegetables. Carrots are a little bit tricky to cut because they're harder and they're very round. Um, so a grown up should help with this step. So using the claw, we wanna cut the ends off and we can just throw those away. And then to cut it down the center, we are gonna cut all of our vegetables in a small dice today. We want them all to be the same size so they'll cook evenly. To cut this, we'll cut it down the center. And then we always want to have our vegetable or fruit or whatever we're cutting on the flattest surface so it doesn't roll around. So for a carrot, that's really hard. So today we're gonna to put it all the way up on the end and as carefully as we can, we're gonna hold the top of it with the claw as well as you can, and we're just going to slice it straight down the center, and then that's gonna give you a flat side to cut on. After you do that, we're gonna take it and do two strips down this one, because it's a smaller carrot, and then we will turn it to the side, and then we're just gonna dice these nice and small all the way through. And then we'd like everything to be about the same size when we're cutting it. So we will cut through those and then add them to our bowl. These can all go into one bowl that we're also gonna add our um, onions to because we'll cook those at the same time. I'm not gonna cut through all of these today, I just wanna demonstrate so you know how to cut each item. Next we'll move on to our onion. Today we're using a white onion and we're gonna use the whole thing. So when you do this, again this is a very rolly vegetable so it's a little tough to, to cut but we want to slice the ends off and then we'll turn it again on its flat side and clean off our cutting board. So for this we're going to have it on the flat end and we're just going to take our knife and we're going to go straight down the center and then that makes it easier to take the peel off. So we'll just take off and discard the outer ends or the outer peel and we'll do that for both sides. And then when we take our onion, this is also gonna be in a small dice. We don't want anything too big and too chunky in the rice. So for this, we're gonna take our knife and we're going to slide it straight back through, but we're not gonna come all the way to the end because then it'll fall apart. And then we're gonna do it one more time, a little bit lower, since we're making such a small dice today. If you're gonna do a large dice, you could just cut it straight through the middle, but we're gonna do it smaller. And then using your claw, if you can, without going all the way through to the end, you're gonna do straight down lines. And then when you turn it around this way and run your knife through, everything will be a similar size and will be ready for your recipe. And then they fall apart and that's the same size as our carrots. So the next item we're gonna cut is the broccoli. This is a great ingredient to have some of the younger helpers in your kitchen help you with because we don't have to use a knife for the first part of it. We can actually just take 
the florets and break them off. And anyone can do that. And these little leaves you can throw away. And so we will have them break off all of these. And then once you get them all off, we're also going to want to cut this into a small dice as well. So after a younger helper helps you pull all the florets off, we're going to put it down again and use our claw. And we're just going to slice it through and kind of turning it over to the flattest side that you can. And then you can just run your knife back through again and make this into a small dice just like all of our other items. Some of the broccoli will fall apart and that's okay. You can just throw that in the trash um, if you get any of these little tiny pieces. And then we're gonna add these to a, a different bowl, not the same bowl as the onions and carrots because they're gonna be cooked in a second step. So our next ingredient is gonna be our peppers. So we have a red bell pepper today. You could also use a different color. And this recipe calls for a red one, but you could use a yellow pepper, an orange pepper, a green pepper. So we're gonna cut the ends off and just slide our knife through. And then we have a flat surface here to keep it safe from rolling around. Then we'll take our knife and just cut around the center. By doing that, we keep all of the seeds in the middle and it makes it a little less messy. We can just throw that away. And then we wanna make sure we're cleaning off our board before we start cutting. So we will cut, we will take our pepper, lay it down. We don't want the shiny side up because sometimes the knife will slip on that and then it can cut your finger. So we wanna put the shiny side down and we will run our knife through. So we have little sticks and then we will take our knife and go back through this way to make a small dice. Again, everything is gonna be cut in small little pieces today. And then we'll add that to the bowl with our broccoli. And if you are new to cutting or if you have a younger helper in the kitchen, make sure you're only cutting one of these at a time. If you are a pro at this, you could stack a few together, but just to be safe, we like to encourage you to just cut one at a time. So once you get all those cut, we'll add those to the bowl. And then we'll move on to our next ingredient. Now we're ready to cut our next ingredient. We are gonna move on to cutting our snow peas. This recipe calls for sugar snap peas. In the grocery store this week, they did not have those, so we just substituted them, and you can do that at home. And honestly, you could switch out any of these ingredients for your favorite vegetables. Um, today, we are gonna be using these. So again, we're gonna cut these into small dices, and you can just run your knife straight through them. It's not gonna make a perfect square just because of the shape, but that's okay. Um, and you could also have someone in your kitchen that's a younger helper and just kind of break them apart too. That can give them a job to help along with you as long as they're kind of in a similar size shape. And then after we do that, we're gonna add these to our bowl with our red pepper and our broccoli and set them aside. Next, we're ready to move on to our ginger. Today, we are gonna use a microplane to grate this. If you don't have one of these at home, that's totally fine. You can just cut it up really small. Um, first, we need to take the peel off of this. Here in the kitchen, we like to just use a spoon to take it off. It's a little safer than either cutting it off or using a peeler. So if you have a younger helper in your kitchen, you can just give them any small spoon. And we're gonna take it on the ginger. And they're kind of awkwardly shaped. So if you have smaller pieces, you can just break those off and set them aside. And you're just gonna take the spoon and just scrape it here on the ginger until all of this outer brown layer is off. And you can just move it around. And this is a good job to give a younger kid because it's totally safe just using a regular spoon. After you get all of the outer skin off, again, we just want to clean this up so you don't get any of the peel in your finished product. So we'll move that aside. And then we're ready to use our microplane. So this is very sharp. If you do have one of these at home, you just wanna be really careful and hold all the way back on the end and don't get your fingers too close because it can grate your skin. So all you have to do, hold it firmly down this way and we're just gonna slide the ginger down like this. And we need two tablespoons, so it is a lot of ginger. Um, so just keep sliding until you go through the entire thing and then you can measure it 
And if you need more, you can grate more. A lot of the ginger will get stuck on the back of this, so you can either bang it on the table or the back part is not sharp. If you run your finger down, you can just scrape it all out and then it'll be in this like kind of pasty texture. And so we need two full tablespoons of that. So if you don't have a microplane at home, which a lot of people don't, um, you can just cut it with a knife. So we can set this aside. And what I would say is you can, if you have a little end that's a little gross, we can just cut that off. And then again, we want to find our flat surface. So we'd set that for this one. It's kind of like that because we started halfway through and just make little tiny slices down and then you'll have these little flat pieces. From there, you can make little tiny sticks. We want to make it as small as you can so you don't get a really big chunk in your recipe. And then after you have your small pieces, you can take those small pieces and cut them into like the tiniest little squares that you can and that you can safely do without getting too close to your fingers. Um, if you need to discard some of it because you're a little too close to your fingers, you can do that too. It's really hard to use the claw for tiny things. And so then you'll just have little, little pieces of ginger there. So now we're ready to mince our garlic. Um, this we're gonna make sure that we take the peel off first. So a little trick for that, either, either take the palm of your hand or you can take the flat side of your knife and just press down until you hear it crack. And then you can more easily take the outside um, paper off. So we'll take the outside off, we'll throw that away. And then for our garlic, we wanna cut it up really small. We don't wanna have really big chunks in this recipe. So if you take your knife and as, um, as well as you can, hold the end of it, hold the end of the garlic, and we're gonna take our knife and carefully slide it back a couple times without going all the way through the garlic because we don't want it to fall apart. After you do that, you're gonna take your knife and go straight down and kind of move your hand out of the way. And then we'll take our knife and we'll go straight back through all those cuts and it's gonna make our garlic fall apart into little tiny pieces, which is what mincing is. And then that little end part we can just throw away. So we're gonna do that for all of our garlic. We're using four cloves today. And then we'll add that to our bowl with our already cut up or grated ginger. And then the last thing we'll be cutting today are our green onions or scallions. For these, we're not gonna be using the whole thing today. We'll just be using the whites on the ends. And then you can either save the green part for another recipe if you're gonna use that at home or you can just discard them um, if you don't need them. So for these, we're gonna take the little end part off and we'll just cut that off and throw it away. And then using your claw again, we're just gonna slice through and we'll keep on going until you get to where the white stop and kind of where the onion splits and then we'll get rid of that. So we're gonna do that for all of our green onions and then we're gonna set those aside. We'll be adding those to our rice at the end so we don't need to add them with the rest of our ingredients. And then we also have our um, baby spinach here. We've already measured that out. We need two cups, but we don't have to do anything to that. We don't have to cut it. It's all ready to go. And the last ingredients we have of our eggs. So we're using four eggs here. We're gonna scramble those. Um, if you have some kids in the kitchen with you today, they can crack these for you. And then we can just use a fork or a whisk and we're just gonna whisk those up. And you just wanna make sure all the yolks are, are broken apart. And then we'll set those aside. So that's the four eggs. And then we also are using brown rice today. The brown rice has a little bit more fiber than white rice. So that again will help our belly stay a little full longer. Um, and it's a little bit healthier than just the plain white rice. We are using um, leftover rice today. It's nice to make fried rice with leftover um, more cold rice instead of making fresh rice right before you cook the fried rice. So we have some rice that just came out of the refrigerator that we made yesterday. And so now we're gonna head back to the stove and start cooking our ingredients. So now that we have all of our ingredients ready to go for our fried rice, we're gonna come back here to the stove and we're gonna get the burner on about medium heat and we're gonna add our oil. So when we are cooking at the stove, we wanna make sure 
that we are always starting with a hot pan. We don't want to add our ingredients to a cold pan and cold oil. So we'll let that heat up. You know that it's ready when the oil will easily move around the pan and it gets a little shimmery. Um, so you can kind of just tip the pan around and we'll just give that a second. And then we're gonna add in our eggs. So we're gonna cook our egg first. We're just gonna get it um, evenly cooked on the bottom, flip it over and just make sure it's cooked all the way through. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Okay, so we can take our, our egg that we've already mixed up. We're gonna pour this into our pan and then set our bowl aside. And so we'll just let that cook for about a minute on that side until um, the egg yolks and everything aren't running around and then we'll flip it over. And once that's pretty well set, then you can just take your spatula and flip it over. It doesn't have to all stay together like an omelet. It doesn't have to be pretty. We're just trying to get it fully cooked. And then once that's cooked all the way through, we can just take that out and we're gonna put it straight into a clean bowl. We don't wanna put it back in the bowl we already used. So after your egg is finished, you wanna, we can use the same pan. So we're gonna cook everything in the same pot. We just wanna wipe this out really quick with a paper towel and then we'll add the rest of our ingredients. So after you wipe out your pan, after you've cooked your egg, we're gonna turn the stove back on about medium and then we're gonna add one more tablespoon of our olive oil. Again, we want to wait for the oil to get hot, which will be a lot faster this time since your pan is already nice and warm from cooking your egg. So we'll just wanna move that around a little bit so it's evenly spread on your whole pan. And then first we're gonna cook our carrots and our onions. So once the oil gets hot, we're gonna dump those in. And we're gonna saute these for about three to five minutes. We want our onion to cook through um, and start getting a little brown on the edges. And we want our carrots to start getting a little bit soft. And that usually takes about three to five minutes. While your, um, your carrots and your onions are cooking, you can take your spatula or your spoon and chop up the egg that we already cooked. Um, that we're gonna add back in at the end, but it's kind of like an omelet now, so you can kind of chop that up while you're waiting. So after about three to five minutes, once your carrots start to get a little bit soft, the onions start to um, get a little translucent and brown on the edges, then we're ready to add back in the rest of our vegetables or add in the rest of our vegetables. So we have our peppers, our broccoli, our peas in here. We're just gonna add them to the same pot and we're gonna continue cooking those. So we'll stir this around. We're gonna cook this again for about three to five more minutes until our vegetables get soft. This will be the last um, time that you're cooking these vegetables, so you want them to be fully cooked to the doneness that you prefer. Um, we don't want them to be too soft and mushy, but we want them to be tender enough to eat in your fried rice. If you don't have a big pan like this at home, that's fine too. You can use a large saute pan. You could even use like a soup pot. Anything that has high enough edges, it's gonna keep everything in there because we still have to add our rice into this pot. So we need it to be big enough that it can hold all of these vegetables and our four cups of rice. So after about three to five minutes, once your vegetables are nice and tender and they're all finished, we can use the same bowl that you had before for your vegetables, and we're actually just gonna take all this out and dump it straight into our bowl, and we're gonna set that aside for later. Okay, so after you take all the vegetables out, all we have to add in now is our ginger that we grated and our garlic, and then we're adding red pepper flakes today. It's just a quarter of a teaspoon in this recipe. Um, if you don't like things spicy, you don't have to add it in, but again, it's only a quarter of a teaspoon for this large pot of fried rice, so um, it's really not that spicy. If you like things a little more spicy, you're welcome to add more here. So again, this is our last tablespoon of olive oil. And then we will add in our garlic, our ginger, and our red pepper flakes. And so this only needs to cook for about like 30 seconds. We don't want it to burn 
We're just gonna stir it all around until the garlic starts to get a little bit brown. And when you're cooking this at home, you'll notice that it's really fragrant. You can smell all the ginger and the garlic. So we wanna keep cooking it until it smells nice and strong and the ginger and the garlic are starting to brown on the edges. But not too long that it starts to burn. And then after that, we're ready for our brown rice. So our brown rice here is left over and it's a little cold, so it's kind of gonna come out in a big clump. So we just wanna break that up and we're gonna stir this around. We're gonna keep cooking this. This is about another five minutes or so. We wanna make sure it's warmed all the way through and we also wanna wait until the edges start to get a little bit brown. And you can kind of just work it around and scrape the bottom of your pan in case any of the ginger got stuck on it. And if there's any large clumps of rice in there, you can break those up too. For this recipe, it's really important that you have all of your ingredients ready before you start cooking, because as you can see, we're adding things pretty quickly and we need the, re the next ingredient to be ready to go. Um, so this works the best if you can get everything ready in bowls and have it right next to you, ready to dump into the pot. Then we're ready to add in our spinach. So we have our two cups of baby spinach and then we have the um, green onions that we already sliced up. So we're gonna add those in. And then we're just gonna stir this around and the heat from the brown rice is going to wilt the spinach. So we just need to stir that around until it kind of gets mixed in. The spinach will get wilted. And then if it starts sticking to the bottom, you can kind of just turn your pan down. And then once you stir that around a little bit, we're ready to add back in our cooked vegetables. And so these are really hot too, so this will help with the spinach, getting it nice and cooked. And then you can also add back in your egg now that you've already chopped up. And if it gets a little stuck together, you can just chop it a little more. And then we're gonna stir that all in. And once your spinach starts to wilt and gets nice and mixed in, then at that point, we're ready to turn off our heat and stir it around. And the only last thing we have to do is add our sauce. So we have our four tablespoons of soy sauce. Here we use reduced sodium soy sauce to cut the salt a little bit. And then we also have sesame, sesame oil. So we're just gonna drizzle that on top and then stir it. And then we'll be all set. So once you have the sauce fully mixed in, then you're all set to go. Again, this makes eight servings, so it'll be one cup per serving. Um, and if you wanna add any more spices to it, you can add sriracha, hot sauce, you could increase the hot pepper flakes, but here we keep it a little mild just so all the different ages will enjoy it. So thanks for joining us today in the kitchen and we hope that you enjoy the vegetable fried rice.